Right now I'm being interviewed following up with a great discussion we had, people talking about the future of Canada. Zooming out, you see that these stones are part of a larger, almost like circle, circular um, park of sorts in the middle of our Ryerson campus. Right now I'm, I'm at home, <laughs> I'm working on a research project, um, hence why I couldn't get into York today. We are here at uh, one of the main halls. We are just linking um, the very hall to the library where students pass by it. So it's a very interesting university in Toronto because it, it is all about diversity and a very welcome to new Canadians and international students and new newcomers. to be an individual researcher doing my thing, asking my questions, but in what ways is that counterproductive if you're looking at complex societal or big issues? We also have climate change and how the effects of global industrial activity are, are creating an atmosphere that is shrinking snow banks, which is the water supply that goes to people's homes. So one of the things in my research that I'm focusing on is freshwater protection in the Arctic. So there's this really interesting collision of, of challenges. You've got a, a demographic of indigenous people that is, is swelling, so there's a demographic pressure, which is something that policy needs to look at quite closely. As grad students trying to bring our ideas to the general public, people have to be listening. So it's not so much only having the tools to do it, but having a receptive ear. Sometimes as a graduate student, I feel like I'm a, a child in the candy store. We learn by building off of each other and, and playing off of each other in this like collective understanding. How can freshwater protection and climate change and social policy all meet in a very cohesive way? As the world becomes more and more of a, of a, of a village, I mean, how much smaller can it get? It's already quite small. We have the world in the palm of our hands with our, with our smartphones, you know. But it won't give us the humanistic capability. My work is to create non-fictional narratives in virtual reality. Um, so 360 3D video and also create a level of interactivity so that the user would have control over how deep he or she gets into the story. Technology is tapping in directly to the nervous system. Technology becomes so valuable and so important to us that we, we forget about the people behind technology, we forget about the people at the other side of the phone. The internet is my entire life. Um, it's what I study, it's how I do my work, it's how everybody does our work. In order to participate in this interconnected world, you need to be interconnected, which is not public space. You pay for connectivity. We can't just talk about the internet, we have to talk about people. And you're like, who do you think is behind the computer screen on the other end. It is people. Let's start with looking at, I suppose, some interconnectivity as a term, as an idea. What are we interconnecting? Who's interconnected? Who's not connected? And who is connecting us? That's what graduate school is all about, is that interconnectedness, is that, you know, going to different professors and, and being mentored by different professors and and they helping you, but you also helping them. Con connected economies don't have to be about globalization. Something like Craigslist takes people in your own community and helps you connect with them so that you can just, you know, walk a couple blocks and try out a new bike and, and maybe buy it from that person. Movie theaters were probably one of the most important buildings to each small town. So the movie theater just didn't show movies. They had the local beauty pageant, graduations. They even at one point when the church burnt down, they held church services at these theaters. What happens here is I've, you're really part of a community. 
and the community aspect of it is like, you know, it's really very, it's really very important to learning, to the learning sort of process itself, to the learning experience, I would say. You meet all kinds of people, uh, not just from within the university, but the university attracts lots of people from the outside. Actually, there were two exciting things last year. I got uh, citizenship, and just after that, in after five days, it was my PhD candidacy exam. I was so happy. I thanked God, and I was, I celebrated, and. Well, the key word for me is networking and trying to step outside your borders. It's a little bit harder to, to cross these borders among these different communities. And Canada is seen as the best country in the world. Uh, but still we have so many problems here. So in order to connect this Canadian value to other parts of the world, because whatever happens in other parts of the world affects us. So how we can uh, deal to that? One way is to get comfortable asking questions. It's not a very um, easy process to, uh, to know because sometimes we get comfortable in what we don't know and, and we're very comfortable to, to have things thrown at us against which we're just going to swim, swim with, swim with the tide or, or swim against it. So I think swimming against the tide is, is one of these places to get comfortable asking questions. Uh, it also, I think, has a lot to do with voice and finding a voice to ask questions. I just finished a film that was a, it was a short documentary on the hiring, hiring policies regarding individuals with physical disabilities in the Canadian workforce. Well, creating the documentary turned out to be a rather difficult process. Um, I'm trying to advocate and further, no, further companies' knowledge of why hiring people with physical disabilities is good for the economy. Certainly is a reflection of how a, how a Canadian society could change. What we are doing, we are doing not only university community, but also for uh, the communities around us, our society. Connecting to people, to one another, sharing not only the information, but the values. I'm producing something and I'm bringing something somewhere and they're based on the response and I'm, I'm creating a, a dialogue. So I'm creating a conversation and I'm creating, I'm producing things based on those different conversations. I think it's so important that we all learn from each other's mistakes and each other's successes and go from there. There's no point in you know, continually doing things that other people have already done. I think if we communicate well and effectively that we can just keep learning and building on each other's work instead of repeating things that have been done. I encounter this in, in my work in social policy where how does education policy meet uh, welfare policy? How does health meet environmental policy? What's needed for Canada's future is teachers. It comes down to getting people excited about learning <laughs> again. The idea is about the collaboration. It's about the building on the knowledge where the, the whole becomes greater than the parts. And the feeling of adding to that whole is, is quite incredible. Oh, we're good. Will you clap for us? <laughs> the camera is doing a very good job. That's good. That's good. You got it. You got it. <laughs> Slate. Ready? So, go ahead. Yeah, a little big slap. That's it. Perfect. And slated. And rolling. And we're going to do one minute of silence while we get it. Okay. Here we go. One, two, three. Thank you. I also do uh, 
Okay, about 30 seconds sound. Quiet on set, boom tone.